Welcome back! My name is Baller Scuba. This is Video Games Over Time. We are still playing Zork. Last time we left off, we fought the thief, which proved to be quite a hassle for me. That took several reloads in order to get that to work in my favor. Uh, then I was thrown off by the canary. Hopefully we won't have any issues like that today, but Zork is a complicated game, so I can't really guarantee anything. When we last left off, when we stopped, we were in front of the treasure case and we had 147 points. So let's move on and try to get more points. We're gonna start by heading back to the dam. So let's go down. North, east, north, northeast, and east. I'm going to try to go a little bit faster because we have seen most of this before. Uh, this is to the dam. Then we're going to go to the dam lobby. North again to the maintenance room. This is what appears to have been the maintenance room for flood control dam number three. Apparently this room has been ransacked recently for most of the valuable equipment is gone. On the wall in front of you is a group of buttons colored blue, yellow, brown, and red. There are doorways to the west and south. There is a group of tool chests here. There is a wrench here. There's an object which looks like a tube of toothpaste here. And there is a screwdriver here. So I'm going to go ahead and take the wrench and the screwdriver. I can just put a comma and take both of them. And then we are going to uh, push the red button. I probably should have done that first. And then turn the lantern off because the red button, the lights within the room come on. Then I can turn the lantern off. Then we're gonna push the yellow button. Click, that doesn't do much. Let's go south a couple times back out to the dam. Then we're gonna use that wrench. Turn bolt with wrench. The slowest gates open and water pours through the dam. I'm going to go ahead and drop the wrench here because I don't think I need it anywhere else. Then we're going to wait a couple times. You can also type again to do what you did last. Uh, five times should be good. I think that'll be enough. Then we'll go west. If moved into a dark place, it is pitch black. You're likely to be eaten by a Gru. Don't get eaten by a Gru. Turn the lantern back on. And now we're at Reservoir South, but this is new. Um, yeah, uh, I should mention that in that room, uh, the blue button will fill the room with water. And if you don't get the wrench and screwdriver out of there, you won't be able to win. So I would recommend not pressing the blue button at all. Just throwing that out there. Um, so Reservoir South, you're in a long room to the north of which is, a, is formerly a lake. However, with the water level lowered, there is merely a wide stream running through the center of the room. There's a path along the stream to the east or west, a steep pathway climbing southwest along the edge of a chasm, and a path leading into a canyon to the southeast. So from here, we want to uh, go north into the reservoir. You're on what used to be a large lake, which is, but which is now a large mud pile. There are shores to the north and south, Lying half buried in the mud is an old trunk bulging with jewels. We're going to want that, but it's going to be a little difficult. So we're going to drop everything but the lantern and then go north to the reservoir north. You're in a large cavernous room, the south of which was formerly a lake. However, with the water level lowered, this is, there is nearly a wide stream running through there. There is a slimy stairway leaving the room to the north. There is a handheld air pump here. I want to go north one more time to the Atlantis room. Atlantis, of course, being a reference to the myth of Atlantis, uh, which was told by Plato. I think it's like a paragraph or two. It's not very descriptive of a myth, uh, but um, yeah, it's Greek. It's a Greek myth of a lost civilization, usually around water. This is an ancient room long underwater. There is, an in, there is an exit to the south and a staircase leading up. On the shore lies Poseidon's own crystal trident. Poseidon, of course, being the Greek god of the sea. We're going to take that, actually. I like your trident. Thanks, Poseidon. So we got that. We are ready to almost go. Uh, I think what we need to do is go south a couple times, back to where all our stuff is, uh, but we're just going to take the trunk. Lying half buried in the mud is an old trunk bulging with jewels. That's a treasure. I'm going to take it. 
And once we get that, we can go all the way back to the trophy case, which is south, southwest, southwest, west, south, and up. Put all treasure in the case, and we're up to 182 points. All right, our next up is going to be the coal mines, uh, but for this, we're going to need some uh, protection. So we're going to head east back into the kitchen, and we're finally going to deal with that elongated brown sack, which smells of hot peppers, but that's not what we want from it. Uh, we're going to open up the sack, and we're going to take, uh, well, inside. Opening the brown sack reveals a lunch and a clove of garlic. We're going to take that garlic. Uh, don't eat it. Eating it at this point will cause you to lose the game. We're going to need it for something, so don't eat it. <laughs> Have I made myself clear yet? Okay, let's head back to where we were. So that's west, down, north, east, north, northeast, and north. And there's all my stuff. I would like my stuff. So we're going to take all there. Uh, then we're going to go uh, north then uh, north again, then up, then north to the mirror room, which we have seen before, we just probably didn't know it, this was all connected. North one more time to the cold passage. This is a cold and damp corridor where a long east-west passageway turns into a southwest, southward pass, path, either way. Um, from here we wanna go west, to the slide room. This is a small chamber which appears to have been part of a coal mine. On the south wall of the chamber, the letters granite wall are etched in the rock. To the east is a long passage, and there is a steep metal slide twisting downward. To the north is a small opening. Let's go through that small opening. To the mine entrance. Here's the coal mine. You're staying at the entrance of what might have been a coal mine. The shaft enters the west wall, and there is another exit on the south end of the room. Gonna head west to the squeaky room. You're in a small room. Strange squeaky sounds may be heard coming from the passage at the north end. You may also escape to the east. Your sword is glowing with a faint blue glow. Now, normally I would want to save in this kind of situation, but we will be fine. So we're gonna go north to the bat room. You are in a small room which has doors only to the east and south. In the corner of the room on the ceiling is a large vampire bat who is obviously deranged and holding his nose. There's an exquisite jade figurine here. Your sword has begun to glow very brightly. D do, you, do you see what happened? It's a vampire bat and we have garlic on us. So it is in the corner holding its nose because we have the garlic. If you don't have the garlic or if you've eaten the garlic, this will be a problem for you but it is not a problem for us, so we're gonna take the figurine. Once we have that, uh, we have a lot of funny things to do. Uh, let's head east to the shaft room. This is a large room in the middle of which is a small shaft descending through the floor into darkness below. To the west and north are exits from this room. Constructed over the top of the shaft is a metal framework to which a heavy iron chain is attached. At the end of the chain is a basket and the sword is now faint blue. So we're gonna like do a little bit of fancy stuff here. We're gonna know what we need to do in advance. Um, so we're going to put the screwdriver in the basket. This will be useful for later, although it's not apparent why right now. And then once we do that, we're going to drop the matchbook and the candles trying to make a little bit of room for ourselves. Uh, then we're going to go north to the smelly room. This is a small nondescript room. However, from the direction of a small descending staircase, a foul odor can be detected. To the south is a narrow tunnel and the sword is no longer glowing. Now around this time, the lantern can start dimming on you. It can start running out of batteries, basically. Um, this is where you absolutely need the lantern. So hopefully you haven't, uh, lost that yet because you need the light in order to get through and this foul odor it's flammable so you want a battery powered light source in order to get through it uh, let's head down into the gas room this is a small room which smells strongly of coal gas there's a short climb up some stairs and a narrow tunnel leading east there's a sapphire encrusted bracelet here the lamp appears a bit dimmer i think we'll be fine on time but 
you know, I don't like the fact that our lamp is getting dimmer at all. We're going to take the bracelet and then head east to the coal mine. We're going to be in here for a bit. Uh, once we're in the coal mine, we want to go northeast, southeast, southwest, down, which takes us to the first room. That's not just a coal mine. Uh, this is the ladder top. This is a very small room in the corner is a rickety wooden ladder leading downward. It might be safe to descend. There is also a staircase leading upward. We're going to go down a second time to the ladder bottom. This is a rather wide room. On one side is the bottom of a narrow wooden ladder to the west and the south are passages leading the room. We're going to head west from here. And we're in the timber room. This is a long and narrow passage which is cleared with broken timbers. A wide passage comes from the east and turns at the west end of the room into a very narrow passageway. From the west comes a strong draft. There's a broken timber here. We're going to drop all of our stuff here because it is safe to drop it here. Um, do I, I need to hold on to something though, don't I? Uh, yes, I need to hold on to the lantern. Okay, all but lantern. Then we're going to go east to the ladder bottom. Then we're going to go uh, south to the dead end. You have come to a dead end in the mine. There's a small pile of coal here. <laughs> the coal. Uh, we're going to take the coal. And then we're going to go north and up and up back into the coal mine. So then we have a little bit of work to do. It's north, east, south, and north to get out of here because, well, it makes sense, I swear. Uh, back to the gas room. Once again, hopefully you still have the lantern for this. Um, then, where was I? Uh, up from here and south from here. And here we are back in the shaft room. So we have a few things here. Uh, we're going to need to take some stuff back. Take candles and matchbook. And we're going to light the match. Light the candle with the match. We've done this before. Then we're going to put the candle and the coal in the basket. And we're going to lower the basket. Basket is lowered to the bottom of the shaft. Well, let's see if we can't do something about that now. Now we're going to go north, down, and then through again. East, northeast, southeast, southwest, down, down, and west. And this leads us back to the timber room where all of our stuff is. We're going to drop everything. Actually, we're going to turn lantern off. Um, drop all? No, I, I have to leave it on, don't I? Turn lantern on. Drop all. You have to leave it on so that I can see while I'm in here. I was hoping I could get away with that, but guess not. Then we're going to go west, and in this room we can see because the candles are here. This is the drafty room. This is a small drafty room in which is the bottom of a long shaft. To the south is a passageway, and to the east is a very narrow passage. In this shaft can be seen a heavy iron chain. At the end of the chain is a basket. The basket contains a small pile of coal, a pair of candles providing light, and a screwdriver. We're probably going to need some of that stuff. Um, we can't do take all at this point because they just try to take the basket which you can't take because it's attached to a chain so here you have to go take candles coal and screwdriver once we have all that we can go south to the machine room this is a very special machine uh, this is a large cold room whose sole exit is to the south in one corner there is a machine which is reminiscent of a clothes dryer on its face is a switch which is labeled start the switch does not appear to be manipulable by any human hand unless the fig fingers are about 1 16th by 1 quarter inch on the front of the machine is a large lid which is closed so what's 1 16th by 1 quarter of an inch the tip of a screwdriver so, what we're going to do 
because we're going to do some magic here. Uh, we're going to open up the lid and we're going to put the coal in the machine. Then we're going to rage against it. Now we're going to close the lid. Close the lid. There we go. Uh, then we're going to move the switch with the screwdriver, which is what you have to do in order to start the thing. The machine comes to life figuratively figuratively, with a dazzling display of colored lights and bizarre noises. After a few moments, the excitement abates. Mine doesn't, though. Let's open the lid. The lid opens, revealing a huge diamond. If only that's how life worked. You put the coal in the dryer and out comes a diamond. That's not how it works. It's just not. We're going to take it, though. Then we're going to go north. And we're going to put the candle, because we're now in the drafting room, so we need to put some stuff back into the basket. The candle, diamond, screwdriver, and basket. Done, done, and done. Then we're going to go east, back to where all our stuff is, take all but timber and the stiletto. Yeah, take all but timber and stiletto. There we go. That's a whole bunch of stuff that I still took. Uh, then we need to go east, up, up, north, east, south, north, up, south. And that takes us to the top of the shaft. Here we can raise the basket. And we'll take the candle and the diamond. We're going to put uh, the candle out. Hooray. Then we're going to head back to the trophy case. West, south, east, south, down. Well, got a little ahead of myself. And up. And then we're going to put all treasure in case. And we're up to 235 points. All right. So we have some more work to do. Let's head uh, back to the dam. So we're going to go down, north, east, east, north, northeast, and east. That takes us to the dam. Um, I'm going to have to take the wrench. I, I dropped it here because I knew I was going to need it here again. Uh, we'll turn the bolt with the wrench. The sluice gates close and water starts to collect behind the dam. That is important. So, there, yeah. This will actually make the loud room quiet. Um, apparently, you can just type echo in the loud room and it will work that way um, from here we want to go southeast am I not in the right spot I thought that I could go southeast from here uh, no just south to the deep canyon then down to the loud room there we go I need to get to the loud room first this is a large room with a ceiling which cannot be detected from the ground. There is a large, there is a narrow passage from east to west and a stone stairway leading upward. The room is eerie in its quietness because we, because we drained uh, the, the lake and then are letting it fill back up. It's now quiet. On the ground is a large platinum bar. Well, I want that. Uh, then I can head west to the round room. We've seen this one before. Um... Let's head southeast now to the engravings cave. You have entered a low cave with passages leading northwest and east. There are old engravings on the wall here. Uh, east to the dome room, which we have seen before. Uh, remember that we had the rope hanging from here. We're going to drop down there. And we've made it to the torch room. This is a large room with a prominent doorway leading to a down staircase. Above you is a large dome. Uh, up around the edge of the dome, 20 feet up, is a wooden railing. In the center of the room sits a white marble pedestal. A piece of rope descends from the railing above, ending some five feet above your head. Sitting on the pedestal is a flaming torch made of ivory. Well, I want that. So we're going to turn the lantern off. Then we're going to drop the lantern. And uh, we need to drop the candles, too. And we're going to take the torch. Now we have a good light source that works on fire, which is why we couldn't take it to the gas room, but we, we can take it now. Um, yeah, so this is basically an inexhaustible light source, so it's going to be super useful, but it is also a treasure. 
So we're going to need to be careful with this one. Uh, from here, we want to go south to the temple. This is the north end of a large temple. On the east wall is an ancient inscription, probably a prayer in a long forgotten language. Below the prayer is a staircase leading down. The west wall is solid granite. The exit of the north end of the room is through huge marble pillars. I think we have seen this one before. From here, we want to go down to the Egyptian room, which is new. This is a room which looks like an Egyptian tomb. There is an ascending staircase to the west. The solid gold coffin used for the burial of Ramses II is here. Oh, it's been a long time since I thought about Ramses II. He's probably the Pharaoh in Exodus, in the book of Exodus, in uh, the Bible. Uh, he was also a pretty big conqueror king in one of the later dynasties, I want to say 20-something. I think I want to say 22nd dynasty, but that's just off the top of my head. I don't remember for sure. Um, but Ramses is a Ramses the Second is a very important pharaoh in Egyptian history, ancient Egyptian history. So, a very big name, might be the most famous um, emperor of ancient times. Of course, now it's probably King Tut, but he wasn't famous at the time. Um, all right, once we have made it here. Couldn't find my fingers on the keyboard all of a sudden. Uh, we're going to open the coffin. The gold coffin opens. A scepter, probably that of, an e of ancient Egypt itself, is in the coffin. The scepter is ornamented with colored enamel and tapers to a sharp point. Let's take it and I assume smack somebody with it. From here we want to go west, back to the temple. Uh, then we want to go south to the altar, which I know we have seen before, down into the cave. There is a tiny cave with entrances west and north and a dark, forbidding staircase leading down. We're going to go north to the mirror room, north to the narrow passage, north to the round room, north to the north-south passage, then west. Is it one more north? I think I went too far north, actually. Let's go back to the round room. Then west from there. <laughs> I went too many times north. Uh, then west again to the troll room, south and up. There we go. Back to the staircase. Um, put all treasure but um, scepter in case. I feel like I need that torch, though. We're going to save anyway. Save. Am I really, did I do all this on one save? I probably did. All right. Probably shouldn't have done that. <laughs> but we're, we're good. Okay, so we have more things to do. How many more ventures do we have? I think we have four more ventures to go. So it's not too bad at this point, I don't think. Uh, let's head. Um, we're going to head a ways. We're going to head east to the kitchen. East to behind the house. East to the clearing east to the canyon view. You're at the top of the Great Canyon on its west wall. From here, there is a marvelous view of the canyon and parts of the frigid river upstream. Across the canyon, the walls of the white cliffs join the mighty ramparts of the Flathead Mountains to the east. Following the canyon upstream to the north, Aragain Falls may be seen, complete with rainbow. The mighty frigid river flows out from a great dark cavern. To the west and south can be seen an immense forest stretching for miles around. A path leads northwest. It is possible to climb down into the canyon from here. So, wait, how many times did I go east? I think I want to go down to the rocky ledge. You're on a ledge about halfway up the wall of the river canyon. You can see from here that the main flow of Aragain Falls twists along a passage which, is a, which it is impossible for you to enter. Below you is the canyon bottom. Above you is more cliff, which appears climbable. Let's go down to the canyon bottom. You are beneath the walls of the river canyon, which may be climbable here. The lesser part of the runoff of Aragain Falls flows by below. To the north is a narrow path. Let's head north. We made it to the end of the rainbow. You're on a small rocky beach on the continuation of the frigid river past the falls. The beach is narrow due to the presence of the white cliffs. The river canyon opens here and the sunlight shines in from above. A rainbow crosses over the falls to the east, and a narrow path continues to the southwest. So, the rainbow. Let's deal with that by waving the scepter. 
suddenly the rainbow appears to be solid and I venture walkable. I think the giveaway was the stairs and the banister. A shimmering pot of gold appears at the end of the rainbow. That's a thing. We're going to take the pot of gold. Hooray. We're going to go east to be on top of the rainbow. You're on top of a rainbow. I bet you never thought you would walk on a rainbow with a magnificent view of the falls. The rainbow travels east west here. Uh, so we're going to head east again to Aragain Falls. You're at the top of Aragain Falls, an enormous waterfall with a drop of about 450 feet. The only path here is on the north end. A solid rainbow spans the falls. Um, yeah, this has always been weird to me. But from here, we want to go north to the shore. You're on the east shore of the river. The water here seems somewhat treacherous. A path travels from north to south here. The south end quickly turns around a sharp corner. And then we want to go north again. You have moved into a dark place. It is pitch black. You are likely to be eaten by a Gru. Did I do that right? Can I, can I take it? You already have that. I don't think, yeah, I think I need the torch here. Yeah, yeah, so we're going to have to go back and get it. Um, I believe it is south. South, west. That sucks. I didn't want to have to do that. Southwest, up, up, northwest. Northwest. There we go. I'm like, what do you mean I can't go that way? I know I can. West, west, west. Oh, there's a lot going on here. Uh, take torch. There we go. So then we'll go east, 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 down, down. Uh, then we do east. Wait, down, down. Oh, north, east. East, then north, north. There we go. We're on a sandy beach. You're on a large sandy beach on the east shore of the river, which is flowing quickly by. A path runs beside the river to the south here, and a passage is partially buried in sand to the northeast. There's a shovel here. I told you we needed the, the torch. All right, we're going to take the shovel. What can I drop here? All right, we're going to drop the sword. And then we're going to... I don't like dropping all this stuff. Um, I always think I'm going to need it again. Take shovel. Then we're going to go northeast to the sandy cave. This is a sand-filled cave whose exit is to the southwest. And we're going to... Digging sand with shovel. Seem to be digging a hole here. Let's do it again. The hole is getting deeper, and that's about it. You're surrounded by a wall of sand on all sides. You see a scarab here in the sand. Yeah, we had to do that. Uh, take scarab. Okay. So then we go southwest. Do I need the shovel anymore? shovel anymore? Do I need the sword? I don't believe I need the shovel anymore. So I'm going to drop the shovel, take the sword, then we're going to go south, south, west, west, southwest. I'm going to put in abbreviations if I'm going to be typing this much. Up, up, northwest, west, west, west. There we go. Put all treasure in case. And we're up to 310 points. Now, oh, I still need a torch. Okay. From here, we have another journey to make. We're going to go down, north, east, east to the round room, up. Did I do that right? Uh, east one more time to the loud room, then up to the deep canyon, then northwest, 
North, I would drown. I feel like I'm going the wrong way here. I should have saved when we were back there because I'm not entirely sure. Um, all right, let's go southeast back to the deep canyon. I'm trying to backtrack here down west, west, west south and up okay so we're back here let's try this again down north east 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 up northwest and i can't go north from here Yeah, I'm a little confused here because, yeah, I'm told to go north here. And that's what I thought I was supposed to do. But they're clearly not going to let me just go in there. Um, is it east of here to the dam? All right, so let's um, turn bolt with wrench. And we'll wait. Then we'll go west again. And then we'll go north. And north again. There we go. So yeah, I, I need to lower the water again for this. Uh, this time I'm going to take the pump. And then I'm going to go south, south, east, and down to the dam base. You're at the base of flood control dam number three, which looms above you to, and to the north. The richer frigid is flowing by here. Along the river are the white cliffs, which seem to form giant walls stretching from north to south along the shores of the river as it winds its way downstream. There's a folded pile of plastic here, which has a small valve attached. We're gonna take the plastic. That's gonna be useful. So let's kind of head around a little bit. We're gonna go uh, up to the dam, south, down, to the loud room. Um, yeah, it's... Let's try and, like, make it this silent echo. The acoustics of the rounds change subtly. Uh, this is a large room with a ceiling which cannot be detected from the ground. There is a narrow passage from east to west and a stall stone stairway leading upward. The room is eerie in its quietness. So, yes, you can just type echo and make that all go away. So, there's something. Um... But now I've lost my place. Uh, I think it's east from here to the damp cave. This cave has exits to the west and east and narrows to a crack towards the south. The earth is particularly damp here. Let's go east again to the White Cliffs Beach. You're on a narrow strip of beach which runs along the base of the White Cliffs. There is a narrow path heading south along the cliffs and a tight passage leading west into the cliffs themselves. We're going to drop all but pump here. Oh, I need the torch, too. Just uh, never drop the torch. And we're going to inflate the plastic. Inflate plastic with pump. The boat inflates and appears seaworthy. A tan label is lying inside the boat. Let's read it. To get into a body of water, say launch. To get to shore, say land or the direction in which you want to maneuver the boat. Warranty. This boat is guaranteed against all defects for a period of 76 milliseconds from date of purchase or until first used, whichever comes first. Warning, the boat is made of thin plastic. Good luck. All right. We're going to drop the label. Oh, it said, hello, sailor. This is the Fro Froboz Magic Boat Company. I didn't read that part. But yeah, we'll drop the label. Then we will get in boat and you're now in the magic boat and launch the boat and we're in the frigid river in the magic boat the river descends here into a valley there is a narrow beach on the west shore beside below the cliffs in the distance a faint rumbling can be heard 
Well, that doesn't sound good. Um, we just kind of have to wait for a while. Time passes. The flow of the river carries you downstream, Frigid River and the Magic Boat. The river is running faster here, and the sound ahead appears to be that of rushing water. On the east shore is a sandy beach. A small area of beach can also be seen below the cliffs on the west shore. There is a red buoy here. Probably a warning. Not if I take it. Which apparently I can just do. Um, land east. Land. Uh, east. You can land either to the east or the west. The flow of the river carries you downstream. Uh, on the east shore is a large landing area. East. The magic boat comes to a rest on the shore. Shore in the magic boat. You're on the east shore of the river. The water seems here so here seems somewhat treacherous. A path travels from north to south here. The south end quickly turns around a sharp corner. Okay. Uh, then we can open the buoy. We don't need the buoy. We need what's inside the buoy. Opening the red buoy reveals a large emerald. I'll probably want that. Take emerald. Drop the buoy. We don't need that anymore. Get out of boat. Deflate the boat. And take plastic. It is magic. How nice of it to, to go around like that. Um, let's go south to Aragain Falls. And we want to go west. West. Southwest. Up. Up. Northwest. West, 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 and west. No. Well, we made it. We made it where we needed to go. Uh, put emerald in the case. And we're up to 319 points. We're getting there. Uh, down, north, east. One, uh, two, three, four, five times. And that will take us... Uh, back to where our stuff was. So we're going to take all but the label and we're going to save. And this is going to be Zork 12. All right, so we're, we're getting there. We're at 319 points. There's not too much for us to do anymore. Um, so let's go west. West. And west again. Back to the round room. And we'll go southeast and east, down, back to the torch room, south, and east. This takes us back to the Egyptian room. This is where the coffin was for uh, Ramses II. We're going to drop all but the torch, and I'm going to take the coffin. Yeah. We're going to go south? No. Uh, west? All right, we're going to pray here. No. South from here? There we go, at the altar. We probably need to pray. And we made it to the forest. This is a forest with trees in all directions. To the east, there appears to be sunlight. Yeah, this is how you can get out of here by praying. We need to go west. We need the machete to go further west. Where am I? Let's go south. This is a dimly lit forest with trees all around. Um, all right, we're going to go east. Path heads north south. One particularly large tree stands at the edge of the path. I believe we need to go south from here. There we go, north of the house. Jeez. East. Yeah, I'm a little lost, but that's all right. We'll we'll figure it out. Then we're going to be behind the house, and we need to go west and west again. And there we are. Um, put all treasure in case, and that gives us. 350 points 
an almost inaudible voice whispers in your ear, look to your treasures for the final secret. What are you, what are you talking about? Um, look? Is there, you guys see anything? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Let me count 19. Um, did I miss something? There it is. In the trophy case is an ancient parchment, which appears to be a map. I thought it was in the collection of treasures, but it's just above it. So we're going to have to read that parchment. The map shows a forest with three clearings. The largest clearing contains a house. Three paths leave the large clearing. One of these paths leading southwest is mar marked to Stone Barrow. Well, let's see what we can do about that. We're going to have to get out first, east twice to go behind the house, then southwest to south of house, uh, northwest to west of house, then southwest to the stone barrow. You're standing in front of a massive barrow of stone. In the east face is a huge stone door which is open. You cannot see into the dark of the tomb. In. And that's it. That That's the game. Um, I'll have to see if I, I could see anything. That went so quick. I couldn't quite read what it said. But that is Zork. We got ourselves all 350 points. We are a master adventurer, even though it took a few tries to get that done. But that is Zork. So let's talk about how the game holds up today. Before we get into the modern review, I did go back and check the footage to see if I at least recorded the end screen so I could read it to you guys, and I didn't. It, it only existed for one frame on my recording, and it cut off and kind of bugged out about halfway through the text. So I went and found what it said, and I'm going to read it to you. Just know that there are name spoilers uh, for future games, but I don't think it's that big of a deal because it, it was in uh, the game at the time. So this is what the end screen says. Inside the barrow. As you enter the barrow, the door closes inexorably behind you. Around you it is dark, but ahead is an enormous cavern brightly lit. Through its center runs a wide stream. Spanning the stream is a small wooden footbridge, and beyond, a path that leads into a dark tunnel. Above the bridge, floating in the air, is a large sign. It reads, All ye who stand before this bridge have completed a great and perilous adventure, which has tested your wit and courage. You have mastered the first part of the Zork trilogy. Those who pass over this bridge must be prepared to undertake an even greater adventure that will severely test your skill and bravery. The Zork trilogy continues with Zork 2, The Wizard of Frobaz, and is completed in Zork 3, The Dungeon Master. So those are like the spoilers. It just gives you names of the sequels. Uh, but we kind of already knew that there were going to be sequels because the game was cut basically in half in order to fit onto uh, any sort of platform, any sort of a computer or disc that was available on the commercial market. So we knew that they already had the information for sequels. Once it kind of became apparent that this was going to be even mildly successful, they already had what was required to put out the next game. It didn't require that much more effort. But we'll talk about that when we get to those games. Uh, so that's how the game ends. Let's talk about how it holds up today. I would say that this game holds up very well. If you guys are okay playing a text adventure game, it's hard to find a better example of one than Zork. Zork is um, basically the granddaddy of, of, of text-based adventure games, even though it came after a few other text adventure games that we have played. This is the one that people remember the most. And I think it is the one that people remember for 
several good reasons. Number one is the descriptions. The writing in this game is great. It makes you feel like you can see what is going on. When we were playing Colossal Cave Adventure, the descriptions were there, but they weren't to the same degree. Uh, when we were playing um, the graphical adventure games, uh, Mystery House and Wizard and the Princess, even though the pictures weren't there, they weren't as good as the descriptions in Zork. I felt that I, I felt like I could see what was happening in Zork more than I could with pictures in the other games. The descriptions are very good. The puzzles, I think, were a step up. There's still a couple puzzles that I would say are difficult to figure out, but I wouldn't say that there were any that were impossible to figure out. The only one that kind of stands out to me is waving the scepter at the rainbow. Uh, that's the only thing that kind of seemed a little bit too far out there. Uh, but compared to what we have seen in other games, I feel like this game gave you clues and let you solve the puzzles in a much more tangible and accessible way. So I have to give it not only to the writing, but to the puzzle design. Um, when it comes to the uh, mazes, there were a couple of them that were difficult, uh, especially the, the coal mines at the end. Um, there were definitely some times where it's just, well, I hope you can figure out how to get through this. Um, but ultimately, I feel like those were less than the other games because this game is so much bigger and longer uh, than the other games that we have played. Having a couple smaller areas like that, I feel, is more easily overlooked than some of the other games where, like Wizard and the Princess, you start in a maze that... It looks the same no matter which way you go and let's hope you you flip over the right rock right that that is much more difficult than what happened in zork so zork i feel holds up very well for a text-based adventure game in terms of the gameplay i guess the only thing that we can really talk about is how well the game interprets the english language how well typing in what you want to happen makes the game do what you want to happen. And this game has a substantial improvement over all of the other adventure games that we have done. I can't think of another game where I could have said, take all, or take all but lantern, take all but piece of timber. And it would have, the other games would have just freaked out. But this game handled it. It could handle drop all but torch. That's not a problem for it. So, for me, this game had a much higher degree of, well, technical ability. It was able to understand what you were talking about, and a lot of the other games did not have that. So, of the adventure games that we have played, Zork is definitely the one that I would recommend at this point. Colossal Cave Adventure is good. And I thoroughly enjoyed it, but I feel Zork is a step up in almost every regard. It definitely took what Colossal Cave Adventure started and went its own direction. And now it feels like Zork is part of its own world. Um, there are only a couple things that would hold people back from it, but... Ultimately, this is a game that I would recommend to anybody that is interested in text adventure games. If that is something that is not a deal breaker for you, not having any graphics, not having any sound, then this is a game that is right up your alley, I would say. So this game I would recommend. I think it holds up very well. And that's my modern review. When the game was released, it sold well, but not exceedingly well. The TRS-80 version sold 1,500 copies in its first nine months. However, as time went on, sales for the game increased. The game grew in popularity so much that by 1986, the game would sell over 370,000 copies. The game's reviews were always very positive. The game was praised as a substantial improvement to Colossal Cave Adventure, with good writing, a lot of depth, and a sophisticated sense of control. As time has gone on, 
the reviews have remained positive. The game is seen as a rich and excellent example of a text adventure game. It is often cited amongst the most influential and best computer games of all time. Zork would go on to spawn sequels, remakes, and clones. The game would be highly influential in how adventure games would be created for years. The game would launch Infocom to success, and we will follow the history of Infocom closely as we continue. As for the creators of Zork, the Imps, their history will be associated with Infocom, and we will follow their careers as well as we continue. And that will do it for the story of Zork for now. My name is Baller Scuba. This has been Video Games Over Time. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you in our next video where we'll join the race.